Why have Manx Care walked away from negotiations with the Royal College of Nursing? They haven't. Manx Care hasn't walked away from the negotiations. It's been at the table right the way through. But the Royal College of Nursing and Manx Care have got themselves into an entrenched position uh, from which neither side is able to um, uh, withdraw and find a way through. So the, the, they're stuck um, in their negotiations. And what does Manx Care intend doing to avoid healthcare staff from striking further? Well, we would like to call upon the Royal College of Nursing to call off their strike action because we feel the risk to patient safety is significant on the day of industrial action. Given the workload at the moment, the level of acuity and the level of dependency, is, I'm deeply concerned that patients will be uh, a very high risk of harm on the day of industrial action. So we are calling on the Royal College of Nursing to uh, call off their strikes, come back to the negotiation table and go to binding arbitration so that this issue can be resolved one way or the other uh, and, and put to bed so that we can get back to looking after patients who need us. And what actions are being taken to ensure that there is safe staffing levels on wards to guarantee patient safety? Well, for the whole of the last couple of years, huge amount of work has gone on in this area. Uh, we've, had, uh, we've, we've identified and recognised that when, when Manx Care was formed, uh, nursing staffing levels in particular were dangerously low and that had gone unchallenged for a long period of time. We, the board at Manx Care very quickly tackled this issue and recognised that there was a problem and needed to put some resource and effort behind it. And so we had a campaign of international recruitment that uh, helped us to stabilise the nursing staffing, but it didn't solve the problem. Because of turnover, because of retirements, there's always going to be that need. So we, uh, we did that. We, it helped to boost our numbers across most clinical areas uh, that were short, particularly in the emergency department, particularly in some of our ward areas, but not in some other areas, like, for example, maternity care, where it's very, very difficult to get hold of midwives. To address the problem in the long term, we needed a solution that built a pipeline of clinical practitioners. And in that regard, we have um, committed to increasing the domestic production of nursing trainees, particularly in adult nursing and mental health nursing, where we're able to, and to sponsor and support um, nurses that we can't train on island, like children's nurses or midwives to sponsor and support their training overseas so that they can return to the island with those skills. Regrettably, that takes a few years to come to fruition, but we, we took the difficult, the bold, the brave decisions in 2022 to put those procedures in place so that we can have that pipeline growing. Uh, and it's our absolute determination to double the number of trainees in this year uh, and in subsequent years so that we can start to replenish the workforce going forward. So it's a, it's a long term, it's a long term endeavour, Charlie, but we've been working on this flat out since 2022. How does the organisation really plan to recruit and retain skilled staff on the island when the current employment package appears to fall below the cost of living, considering there's a UK wide and indeed worldwide shortage of skilled nurses? Yeah, and, and I think, you know, that is a very good point. Um, it's one of the reasons why Royal College of Nursing is campaigning, because their members feel that their pay rises have fallen behind the cost of living increases and completely understand it. it. Pay is an important part of the solution. We have to be competitive on the Isle of Man if we want to stand a reasonable chance of uh, recruiting and retaining um, skilled professionals. Without question, we have to do that. But it's not just about pay as well. It's also about the conditions of work so that there's enough people so that people are not burnt out or overstretched. That we can manage the workloads. And in some cases, it's about enabling and liberating clinical practitioners to operate at the very top of their field so that they can be advanced practitioners and consultant practitioners. Um, and for a lot of people, that is a, is a big attraction. If, where they get the opportunity to do that, they're much more likely to work with us and stay with us. So it's a combination of all of those things that come together to make it attractive, make it sustainable. And what are the conditions really at the hospital that make it really stand out to other hospitals in the UK? Well, I think it depends on the kind of person that you are. But if you were, if you were looking for um, a focus on emergency care, on uh, rescue and resilience, 
uh, on uh, being able to respond to the needs of people who are frail and elderly and in, in, in need of complex care, this is a fabulous place to come. And, and for many people, the big attraction is working and living on the Isle of Man because it, it gives you a lifestyle that's difficult to acquire elsewhere. And, uh, and so it offers a number of benefits for people who are interested in that. 